Hola, my name is Freya higgins Debiol, and I'm a senior lecturer in tourism management with the University of South Australia. I would like to thank Irene and Alexander for inviting me to speak to you as part of these discussions about tourism economies facing the new reality. I've done work on rethinking tourism in terms of degrowth in tourism, and I wanted to share with you some of my thinking on this in response to questions that were posed to me for this event. And I thank you for allowing me to speak to you. Degrowth is a project of voluntary shrinking of production and consumption with a view to um, securing environmental sustainability. Continual growth and a growth ideology is uneconomic, unjust, and also unsustainable. And that's why we must rethink the way that we have created our societies, our economies, and things like our tourism industries. So in terms of tourism, the reason that we need degrowth in tourism is because it is such a consumptive um, activity and it's a frivolous activity. When we face environmental limits and things like global climate change impacting upon us, we need to rethink how we're living and how we're using our resources. I look to the example and the case study of the cruise ship industry to see some of the most negative examples of a mass tourism consumptive ideology um, happening. And there's abuse of both people and local destinations and ecologies by the cruise industry as a model of making its profits. So that's what we're challenging with a degrowth approach. We do have to realize that our economies have been premised on continuous growth as a way for corporations to continue to accumulate profits. And that's with the support of uh, compliant governments and also supported by our media and other uh, powerful tools for allowing uh, capitalism to extract profits from environment and labor of others. The thing with COVID-19, while it's awful that we're in this challenge um, that we're in with the pandemic crisis, it in fact has been a revealing moment of uh, very important things that we should take to change our learning. So for instance, it's revealed that globalization is not an unstoppable force. It's shown us that we can de-link from forces of continuous um, economic growth, that we don't need consumerism to express our identities, that the uh, society is more important than the market, that neoliberal capitalism can be challenged, and particularly tourism dependency is a vulnerability and a weakness, and we need to rethink what we do. We were facing over-tourism before the crisis of COVID-19, and now we're in a, a case of almost no tourism occurring. And the question that um, comes to us as we reflect on our choices is what kind of future do we want to move into and in fact there were some great examples of choices of reducing consumption and production through tourism through things like copenhagen's localhood strategy which invited visitors to live with the locals and live in the ways that they're used to and to appreciate human connection and that local community was the focal point Amsterdam had the idea of marry a local, which took people out of the congested tourism places and invited people to enjoy the things that the locals enjoyed while they were on their holidays. And then you've got the example of places like Palau in the South Pacific and New Zealand, trying to create codes of conduct of custodianship and inviting visitors to actually become um, in a relationship with place. These are all great examples of how we can change tourism and move away from the growth mindset. It will be a challenge to change things, however, and I note that at the global scale, there will be powerful interests that will resist this um, by the forces I mentioned of corporations backed up by compliant governments and media that supports the accumulation of profits by corporates. We do have some challenges, though, to these approaches, and we need to take heart from these, including examples like well-being economies and buen vivir coming from Latin America as examples of ways that degrowth can be a positive strategy. 
I and my colleagues have actually proposed redefining tourism by the local community and understanding that visitors only come on the invitation of the local community and that local community rights, interest, consent, and benefits are the pillars of a positive force of tourism and it would be a way of degrowing it. Now, I was asked, is this reasonable for Latin America and for the global south? Well, I've been inspired by the thinking that comes from Latin American colleagues, and that includes David Barkin of Mexico, who is a uh, economist who has talked about rethinking tourism uh, for decades now. So David Barkin's work has inspired me. Arturo Escobar from Colombia in the United States is also another thinker that shows us the way. And then we have movements like Zapatismo, which shows us that we can create autonomous ways of development. In terms of tourism, we need to react to that about local control and the diversity of local ways of being with cultures, peoples, and places that are in a more balanced way. And of course, indigenous rights and indigenous viewpoints are very, very important to our learning because there's examples all around the world of great living um, in relatedness and in responsibility and with reciprocity. These are all values that we could take forward. The key thing is tourism needs to be put in its proper place. Tourism is not an end in itself. And so this idea of relationships and embedding and this idea of local control that I proposed in my recent work and socializing tourism actually has us have a, a tool to put tourism at the service of communities rather than actually dictating how communities live. My recommendations for the future of young um, and new professionals coming into tourism is values. Everything that we need to go into the future will be values-based. So I encourage thinking, learning, listening, and giving as the ways we need to go forward. With COVID-19, it's not been a pleasant experience for us, but it is an opportunity for us to pause and reflect. And that's been a gift and we should embrace it. I really hope that uh, the future scholars that are going through our university programs come out with values of sharing, community, connection, and deep listening to the voices that call for responsibility between peoples with a look toward peoples and cultures and places and being attuned to those things. I hope that these thoughts have been useful and I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you in person, but I thank you very much for your listening to me. All the best and do take care.